And it doesn't need to be this chronic depressed immune response. Let's say this is taking place on a, on a regular basis with me. My liver cell didn't die, and it went into this rapid replication, but now I just went through this huge amount of stress. Uh, you just got this letter from the IRS, or you just got laid off from your job, or you're going through marital issues, or something's wrong with your child, or your parent is dying. You go through stress. What does stress do to your body? Stress diminishes your immune response. Stress is a part of your sympathetic nervous system. You fire the sympathetic response and your immune system and your digestive tract run on your parasympathetic nervous system. So that's suppressed. Those things shut down and guess what? I have a diminished immune response. Maybe it's only for a few weeks. Maybe it's only for a few months. But that time that I have that diminished immune response, my T cells and my macrophage and lymphocytes were not nearly strong enough to kill that rapidly replicating and growing cell mass. Do you realize in order for you to have a diagnosis of cancer by any modern methods today, it has to be in the millions of cells large. It's that size of a pinhead at a million cells. So, you know, you have a lump on your breast. It's in the millions and millions of cells already. Okay, this has been going on for some time. It didn't just happen yesterday. Even if it's a very quick growing cancer. Follow me so far? So you had a diminished immune response, caused this cancer just to take off. And now, even if I bring my immune system back up, but I take a whole bunch of echinacea, I'm doing all these right things, and, you know, you play the country music song backwards, and you get your horse back and your cow back and all this stuff. <laughs> But uh, everything starts falling in line for you and you have a healthy immune response. It may be too large for your immune system to kill. Because what happens is, in real life, so in real life, this, every time I replicate a cell, or even normal cell metabolism in real life, gives off waste. So your cells in your body are, are are together, right? They're next to each other, but there's a space in between your cells. That's called your extracellular space, or your extracellular matrix is a better term for it, because it really isn't a space, it's filled with fluid. So it's filled with fluid that becomes very viscous as, it, as wastes are dumped into there. So how your cells respirate, you could say, they take in nutrients and then they they metabolize those nutrients, whatever that cell is going to do, and they dump their waste into the space between the cells. Uh, and the more it's rapidly replicating and rapidly metabolizing, as in cancer, it's going to give off an enormous amount of waste. So that waste is very acidic. That's why you heard said that you should alkalize your tissue, right? Very important. And you may even heard the terminology that you could, uh, you could, cancer doesn't grow in an acidic environment, right? You heard that term before? I wasn't here for the last person's speech, but that's a good term. It's not really true though. Cancer be creates an acidic environment. It's rapid replication by very definition, gives off a ton of waste into the extracellular matrix. And that waste is very acidic. Cancer by itself creates an acidic environment. So you could be eating perfectly, you could be doing everything possibly right, and at that cancer, it's acidic, I'll guarantee you. That acidic waste becomes like an acidic slime layer around the cancer that actually protects it against your immune system. So even if you did all this stuff right and you're doing all this immune stimulation, your macrophages are trying to attack it and can't even penetrate the acidic slime layer. That's not good. So the bigger the cancer is, the bigger that acidic slime layer, the harder it is to penetrate for your immune system to kill it. So it becomes this catch-22 kind of thing, right? So, and usually people aren't stressed with cancer, right? So they go to the doctor and you have liver cancer. And you go, typically, oh yes, I thought that's what it is, I told you. <laughs> no, they go, what? They're scared to death. They're in this total fear panic mode, typically, right? So what does that do? Your sympathetic nervous system goes through the roof, your parasympathetic drops into the garbage, your immune system goes, okay, I guess I'm not eating, I'm going on a vacation, and you're in trouble. So it just perpetuates the growth of the cancer. Now there's nothing trying to keep it at bay. The cancer is growing like crazy now. And you're given usually three options from the medical field, right? So you have, we could surgically remove it. Uh, we could uh, radiate it. 
um, or we could use chemotherapy and, or a combination of those. And all of those really are what are termed debulking. You heard that term? Debulking? You're debulking the cancer. You're trying to remove as much of it as possible. That's what you're trying to do. So is it always bad to do any of those? No, not necessarily. I mean, you've got to really think about this. And again, the more physiology you know and the more you really start thinking about what's actually taking place, maybe you're going to make a different decision than when you're under this panic mode and I've got to just trust the doctor completely and you've got all your family members saying, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, you've got to do this, partly because it might absolve them from any responsibility from helping you any other way. We'll just push you, just do what the doctor does. <laughs> then if it doesn't turn out right, well, it's his fault. We did everything possible. There is another way. Even if you choose to do some of the chemo, radiation, or surgery, there is another way. There are some inherent flaws, right? Even doing a biopsy, there's inherent flaws. We're going to do a needle biopsy. Going in there, sticking a needle in there, pulling that needle out, you spread cancer cells. You heard that before? Truth is, though, you've already spread a lot of cancer cells. By the time the cancer is at in the thousands of cell mass, long before it's able to be diagnosed on a CT scan mammogram or MRI or anything like that, it is giving off what are called circulating tumor cells. Circulating tumor cells are not yet rapidly replicating cells. They break off from the cancer and they circulate through the body, hence their name, and they're looking for a place to set up home and raise a family, you could say. And that's where metastasizing comes in. That's where metastasize comes in, yes. That's where other primary tumors come in too. They may be listed as primary tumors too. But typically those are true metastasis. <coughs> Here's the problem. We're going to go in there and do a needle biopsy. We spread it around even more. We're going to go in there and do surgery. We can spread it around even more. We can't possibly see these cells. We can only see the mass. So we're going to take out the greatest amount of mass and hope that we've gotten all the cells. Right? You can't know that you got all the cells. There's other problems inherent with surgery because when you go there and do surgery, your body heals any injury. You know, I cut myself with my chainsaw once. Yes, I did admit to that on camera. No. <laughs> How my body healed that was after I took the duct tape off. No. <laughs> How my body healed that was sending out an enormous amount of growth hormone. That's how your body heals any injury. You do surgery, you send out an enormous amount of growth hormone to heal that surgery, right? Growth hormone to cancer cells is like gasoline. So there's a huge inherent danger to surgery. Though sometimes it's necessary and you have to take approaches. I'm not saying that's not always the, you know, the, a not wise thing to do. I'm just saying you've got to think about this. Well, what's our other approach? We're going to do chemotherapy. So what does chemotherapy do? Chemotherapy is a very strong poison that kills rapidly replicating cells. Well, that's great. You said cancer was rapidly replicated, so we want to take chemotherapy because it'll kill the rapidly replicating cells. Problem. Well, there's other cells in your body that are rapidly replicating, like your hair follicles. That's why your hair falls out when you do chemotherapy. Also, your immune system. That's why your immune system gets shut out, shut down when you do chemotherapy. Well, that's kind of bad because I thought you said we need an immune system to heal cancer. That's a really bad one. The other really bad thing about doing chemotherapy, even if we could take a magic wand and wave it over you and all your cancer is gone, um, is that the truth is chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery do nothing for circulating tumor cells. And like I said, you have circulating tumor cells long before you even have a diagnosis of cancer. They're everywhere. And what is keeping them at bay? What is keeping them from rapidly replicating at this point? The immune system. 